Good morning. Coming to you again at GPH Ministries. And good evening, good afternoon. I hope everyone blessed. Um, and when you got Christ in your life, you know you're blessed. And you know you ain't stressed. But I'm coming to you once again. And I'm letting you know everything I speak on in the Word of God is in the Word of God. You know? I'm not just talking out of my side of my mouth, but I want to share with you that little things that makes a big difference in God's eyesight. You know, everybody think God, because you got millions of dollars, you special, you know, or you own big fancy cars and big fancy houses and you special. You know, that's how people know that, you know, you got a better connection with God. The riches of this world don't make you have a better connection than God. Just like that lady with the little mite who put more than all them rich people did in the synagogue. But I'm going to be reading. I want to share some verses with you today. So you can get a clarification and not only that, these verses will help you in your walk with Christ to let you know what he, how he feel about certain things. Luke 10, Luke 16, verse 10. One who is faithful in a very little is also faithful in much. And one who is dishonest and a very little is also dishonest in much. See? Matthew 13, 32. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it has grown. It is large than all the garden's plants and become a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. <clears throat> now, ain't that some, ain't that a small thing? A little mustard seed. Matthew seventeen twenty. He said to them, because of your little faith, for truly I say to you, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. In Christ Jesus, ain't nothing impossible for him. And whatever you speak, that's what we come if it's of God. Zechariah 4.10, for whoever has despised the day of small things shall rejoice and shall see the plumb line and the hand of, of <clears throat> Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord which range through the whole earth. I'll be reading Matthew 13, 31 through 13. I'll be reading Matthew 13, 31 through 32. He put another parable before them saying, the kingdom of heaven is like a grain of mustard seed that a man took and sowed in his field. And it is the smallest of all seeds. Listen good. But when it has grown, it is large than all the garden plants and become a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in it, branches. It's the smallest things. Like God said, if you, if you want to save some money, you can save like maybe... A hundred dollars every time you get paid. And it'll add up to much. Just like paying a car note. <clears throat> when you pay your car note, 
just imagine if you saved that money over the years, over over seven years, because some cars are seventy and eighty thousand dollars. Just imagine you bought your old car, you know, and saved that money. I know some of us want a new car. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying, if you want to save some money, First Corinthians one twenty six through twenty nine. For consider your calling, brother. Not many of you were wise according to the worldly standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human bring, might bring boasting in the presence of God. <clears throat> Told you we just dirty rags. But we get a little something and we think we gods now. But no, we not. We only human. God just chose you. Many are called, but few are chosen. Remember? Proverbs 16.3 Commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. Like I was saying, whatever you do, take it to the Lord in prayer. Luke 17, verse 6. And the Lord said, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you could say to the mulberry tree, be uprooted and plant in the sea, and it would obey you. <coughs> And when you're in Christ Jesus, it's power in the name of the Lord. I don't care what nobody tell you. It's power in the name of the Lord. Jeremiah 33, 3. Call to me and I will answer you and will tell you great and hidden things that you have not known. See, I told you God revealed his secrets to his children, to his people. He don't leave them in the blind. John chapter 6 verse 9 there's a there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish but what are they for so many it only takes so many God could take a little bit of fish and some loaves of bread and feed a whole nation just remember that Romans 6 23 for the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. Like I was telling you, for those who are not in Christ, call up on his name and ask him to come in and sup with you and God will and turn from your ways and seek his face and get into the word of God and learn of him. You tried everything you wanted to try and it didn't work. Now it's time to try Jesus. James 3, 5. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great things. How great is a forest is set a blaze by such a small fire. Mm. One lie can turn into one lie can turn a whole forest on fire. It can burn it up. <laughs> yeah, we gotta be careful how we put our mouth on people. Uh, Galatians five six nine. A little heaven, a little eleven. Excuse me, eleven. The whole lump. A little sin, a little sin messes up everything. James 3, 4. Look at the ship. Also, though they are so large and are driven by strong winds, 
they are guided by a very small rudder. <laughs> Hallelujah. Whatever the will of the pilot directs. Ain't that something? A big ship guided by a small rudder. The little things in God's kingdom. He used them to fool the wise and shame them as well. James 1 27 religious that is pure and undefiled before God the father is this to visit orphans and widows in their afflictions and to keep yourselves unstained from this world unstained for God said for those who love this world love death I'll be going to Zechariah 4, 6 through 7. Then he said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zechariah, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain before Zechariah? You shall you shall become a plan a plain, and he shall bring forward the top stone amid shouts of grace grace to it. I was letting you guys know the things I speak of is from the word of God. What I wanted to give you some little nuggets that can help you in your walk. Oh, I could speak words all day long. <clears throat> I could tell you what Ma Bell doing, what Aunt Gray doing. I could tell you <clears throat> what the president doing, and I could tell you what all them things are. All them people are doing. That's fine and dandy, but I rather tell you what thus said the Lord and what He doing in His kingdom. I rather give you the word of God to keep you filled and keep your spirit strong and keep your eyes open. I rather give you the word of God to, so that way when you go to battle, you'll be able to fight. You know, let's go to Hebrew 11. When you put the whole armor of God on every day, that's what we should do. We should be uh, uh, exchanging words, sharpening each other with the word of God. You know, you give me some nuggets, I give you some nuggets. You give me some word of God, I give you some word of God. Hey, and another thing, we know a lot of people who don't have no one in their lives. Do we call and check on them or do we go by and visit them? It's the smallest things that, that God love. I'm telling you. See, people, see, let me tell you. Once you get into Christ Jesus, it's like this. You drinking milk, mm, small things. Then all of a sudden from drinking milk, you're eating food. And when you're eating food, you will know how to treat people out here. Because for those who want to be leaders, they must become servants. Are you a servant to God's children? Are you a servant to God's kingdom? Can you serve? Can you wash my feet? I'm a pastor. Can you wash my feet? Line them up. I'll wash all y'all feet. For those who want to be ahead of anything, must become a servant first. Okay? Do we serve the community? Mm hmm? Do we serve people? <clears throat> no, we don't. You know why? We serve ourselves these days because we don't look on things of others. We look on things of ourselves and what me, myself, and I can do. You know, it's little eyes and big U's. That's all it is these days. But I'm not saying everybody like that. Don't get me wrong. It's a lot of God's children out here. And they take care of business, too. And you know who they are. Because they only got one thing on their mind. It ain't about money on their mind. It ain't about what they can get on their mind. It's about what thus said the Lord and what he loved. That's what we should be worried about. Start, start your treasures in heaven, like I said, not on earth. 
We at GPH Ministries, we love you. Love all. Hate you for now and bye.